Okay, I want to uh, revisit the habeas corpus topic for a second. I think a lot of y'all sleeping on it. Y'all really been sleeping on the petition for a writ of habeas corpus. I'm going to start off by um, showing you the Constitution. This is only going to be the Article 1 and the, the Bill of Rights of the Constitution. This is all you really need, to be honest with you, um, pertaining to a lot of the things that y'all are actually fighting against. Uh, i.e. Uh, child support. <laughs> okay. We're going to go over this, this little bit right here and just a few of these things that, that really aligns with this, okay? No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property except by due process, due process of law. When you've, been, when you've been locked into a child support court case, um, basically you're not even given any. It deprives you of your life deprive you of your liberty. You can't move around like you want to. Some of y'all got warrants out for your arrest and can't even drive nowhere. Your license is suspended. It deprives you from being able to move around. It, 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 um, um, your autonomy. You have the right to autonomy, that being able to freely move around. Um, it, it actually, it, it, of course, it deprives your freedom of life. Like you're supposed to be able to, to live your life freely the way you want to live your life without being um, turned into a debt slave. Okay, without being uh, some type of debt slave to some corporation. Okay, this this alone right here, this part right here, is can can be used in your uh, used in a child support case. Okay, property. Let's see. Let's see. Here we go. Your child being taken from you. Um, your rights are also your property. Okay, your rights are also your property. Let's keep going. Protection to persons and pro and and uh, property. Equal protection. They show favoritism to mothers in family court all the damn time. Everybody knows that, okay? That's common knowledge. Anybody listening to this and you offended by that statement, you probably got damn problem. So we're not even trying to jump on no gender war. This is just, this is common knowledge. We all know that, okay? Protection to person and person and property is the is paramount duty of the government and shall be impartial and com and complete. That means not one sided, impartial. One side partial is one side. Impartial is both is it means there is no side being taken. Impartial and complete. No person shall be denied equal protection of the laws. Okay, so you should not be agreeing to this uh, anything less than 50-50 custody on your kids. Okay, you should not be agreeing to that. That every other weekend is one-sided. That's partial. It's not impartial. This is why I didn't agree to that one-sided bullshit. You don't agree to that type of stuff. You have to stand up for your rights. It, this is that's impar It's not impartial. Impartial is fifty-fifty. You both created that baby. You both of y'all have equal rights to the baby. Not only that, the child has equal has has right to have an equal relationship with mother and father. Okay, so that's impartial. That is what you call equitable. That's fair. That's what's right. That's down the middle. Impartial. It should be impartial and complete. No person shall be denied equal. Protection. That's the that's the baseline for the word e equity. When you're trying to get a sequel equitable equitable remedy, i.e. a habeas corpus, <laughs> your equity jurisdiction is what is what deals with this. Okay, equal equal protection of the law. Okay, freedom of conscience. That's when you're talking about uh, your right to uh, religion right here. Each person has a no has a, a natural and inalienable right to worship God. Each according to to the uh, to the dictates of that person's own conscience, no uh, no human authority should should in any case control or interfere with with such right of conscience. The way what you find what you call God, you know, uh, according to your conscience, the right of conscience that has everything to do with your your relationship with God, how you see God, you know, um, if you believe in a God, and you have that right to to operate according to how. You know your you know your religious freedoms, okay? According to how it you know how it dictates, uh, according to the dictates of your conscience, okay? And say nobody can interfere with that, okay? You can you can work that however you want to. Uh, if you if you if you if you um, if you see your your children your your children as being a gift from God, 
Okay, so you can word that however you want to in your petition. I'm getting around. I'm getting to. I'm getting to something like that. I'm getting to something. So y'all just kind of bear with me. I'm kind of throwing y'all some nuggets out here. You need to be taking some damn notes. I'm gonna make this video short and sweet, but I need you to take notes. Paragraph four: Religious uh, opinions, freedoms, um, freedom of religion. Say, no uh, inhabitant of this state shall be shall be molested in the person or property in person or property to be prohibited from uh, from holding a public office. We're not talking about that. They ain't got to do what we're talking about. Uh, religious freedom, uh, religious, they say freedom of speech and of uh, the press to, and of the press uh, guaranteed. No, no law shall pass, uh, shall be passed to, to curtail or rest refrain, restrain the freedom of speech or of the press. Of the press, that was like, you know, uh, that's what they used to call when they put something in the newspaper. Okay, so you can actually make any type of, you know, we already know what freedom of speech is. And putting something in the newspaper, you can make any type of piece, PSA, uh, public service announcement uh, in a newspaper, whatever. Every person may speak, write, or publish uh, sentiments on all subjects, but shall be, um, shall be responsible for the abuse of that, of that liberty. Okay, so you don't want to abuse it. But um, I claim my son in the newspaper. Okay, I claim, and I had the freedom to do that, and I did that. Okay, I, I made a claim. I did a, it's called a, a, a birth announcement. I did that. So you have the right to do that if you choose to do that. This is all constitutional, y'all. And every judge takes an oath to support this. So if you align with this, they got no damn choice but to be aligned with it too. Okay, so otherwise they can, they're, that's treason. They're warning, they're warning against the people. They can actually be held accountable for that. Okay, and I'm, I'm, I'm not even done. Keep going. Let's see. Uh, paragraph six, libel. Let's see. In the civil, uh, civil or criminal action for libel, the truth may be given in evidence, and if it is, if it shall appear to the to the trier of fact that the that the matter charged as a, as libel is true, the party shall be discharged. Okay. Um. This is this is the end of time. You got a. Uh, uh, um, Y'all already see what that means. Anytime you basically got to shoot, use evidence to prove your case. Okay, if you have evidence and you got proof that you proven exactly what the hell you just said, they got to be discharged. They got to discharge. They got they got to leave you alone. Okay, they can't this. They can't ignore proper evidence. Now, some things that y'all call evidence ain't no damn evidence. So make sure you have real evidence to prove your case. That way, they can discharge. That they can discharge the matter. This is all constitution. Citizens, protections of, protection of all citizens of the, of the United States. Y'all notice, y'all don't nobody want to be called a citizen of the United States. <laughs> None of us want to be called that. But keep reading. All citizens of the United States, resident, resident uh, uh, in this state, uh, resident in this state, in this state, are hereby declared citizens of this state. And is it, I guess it's what they call state citizen. Anyway, keep, let's keep going. That's not the topic right now. And it shall be the duty of the General Assembly to enact such laws as will as will protect them in the full enjoyment of the rights, privileges, and immunities due uh, to such citizenship. Okay, um, y'all can you know, people run from the word citizen and United States citizen, but that's another topic for another story. We're not going to even lay on that. Okay, we we specifically talking about. The child support issue. That's what I'm specifically dealing with right now. Okay. Okay. So, but at the same time, if they see you as a U.S. citizen, you still have rights and privileges and immunities. Bottom line, if you're a citizen, whether you see yourself as a U.S. citizen or not a U.S. citizen, you still have rights. You still have rights. I don't know where the hell you get to act like because you're a U.S. citizen, meaning you're supposed to get shitted on and you ain't got shit and you can't do a goddamn thing about it. That's that's some bullshit. I don't know where we get that from. I even adopted that too, but I don't believe that now, because we already we see we see people will people can win a court case and, and have that status and not even bother trying to attack that status of a U.S. citizen. So a lot of times I think a lot of times we look so deep into stuff that we complicate we complicate things for ourselves. We really do. We make shit hard for our damn selves. Let's keep going. We're not gonna touch on right to bear arms. We already know about that. We ain't talking about um. We talking about specifically the children. We're talking about the, the 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 offspring right about now. Right to assemble and petition. I'm only gonna speak about petition because 
a petition when you're talking about petitioning for a writ of habeas corpus uh this is you no know, this is basically talking about a petition the people have the right to assemble uh peacefully uh, peaceably um for their common good and to apply and to apply by petition or a uh, uh, remonstrance uh to those vested with the powers of government for redress of grievances this is what a, a, a this is what um a petition for a writ of habeas corpus or any other type of writ that you're petitioning for you have the right if you have a grievance you have a right to petition or, or uh remonstrate i'm just probably chopping that whole word up remonstrance remonstrance uh to those vested with the powers of government for redress of grievances so you can get it you know you can petition to get to to get redress for a grievance that you got going on that's what we got going on with these kids. A lot of times the kids are being kept from us, from these bit, from bitter mothers who choose not to let fathers have a relationship with their kids. This is, that's a, that's a grievance. You can petition for, uh, petition to the people who vested with, uh, with the powers of government for redress of a grievance. You know what a regret, you know what a regress is, a redress is, right? Want to kind of, I'm trying to make this fast as possible. See, relief for redress. Say it means uh, to obtain a remedy. Okay, so you're trying to get something done right there. So that's what that is. You're trying to get a, re a remedy for a regret for a grievance. Okay. Now, so this is what I'm telling y'all. Y'all got to stop sleeping on this writ of habeas corpus. Stop sleeping on it. Okay. Um. Rid of attainder, expose, uh, expo, expose, ex post facto laws, um, and reach, uh, re retroactive laws. No bill of attainder or ex post facto law, uh, retroactive law, or laws impairing the obligation of, of contracts or making ir uh, irrevocable grants of, of, uh, of special privileges or immunities shall be passed. They're doing a lot of this when it comes to family court. They're doing a whole lot of this. They're operating under color of law in the first place. And I'm going to get to that in a second. Okay? Because for one, they, they don't use full disclosure. They're using a totally different language than, you, than what you're using. They don't, make, they don't make it clear that you have an option. Most of y'all don't even know you have an option. There's no full disclosure. You don't know you have an option to object to that. They don't know that they, they, but they, you know, you don't know that you have an option. I ain't saying they don't know. You don't know that you have an option to object to it. They don't, you don't know that. Some of you get locked in there. When you walked in, walk in there, they're automatically adjudicating as if they have authority to make you do something that you don't, that without even disclosing to you that you do have an option. Without even disclosing to you. Um, that they have you operating under presumptions that you don't have that you have nothing that you don't you know nothing about you don't know you don't understand the language of the court and you don't know the rules of the game and they're, yet they're playing the game with you as if you're as if you are trained and that that alone is fraud that is that that's like it's like how can we come how can we have law saying that we can't contract with a minor but you don't have a problem bringing someone in that don't know how to play the game to play the game but anyway I'm not gonna rant on that part. Right to trial and by jury. That's not what we're not going to get on that one. Um, right to the courts. No person shall be deprived of the right to uh, to prosecute or defend either in person or or by an attorney uh, that uh, that person's own cause in any court in any of the courts of this state. Okay, you got to you know you, you can use an attorney or you can do it on your own. I never use attorneys for for family court. Because attorneys always their 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 number one allegiance is to the, is family court. They want to try to lock you into a child support agreement, which which only helps their pension and their retirement plan. I ain't got nothing to do with your damn pension. I ain't got nothing to do with the state. The state I don't work for the state. My job, my duty is to my son. It's not to the state. Okay, so I don't want to be a participating in any of these these contracts that only benefits y'all and not and and it and it takes away not only does it take away my physical access to my child my son because keep in mind it, it, it takes away from my financial uh, um, when it comes to my son I could be pouring that money into my son not into the state now think about think about this y'all when y'all agree to every other weekend you have equal access you have equal rights to your child. 
of whether it's a physical and legal. You have equal rights as you and the father, the mother and the father both have equal rights to them to the babies. That's that's both physical and you know physical and uh, legal. So for you to agree to be every other weekend with your baby, you're allowing them to take your rights from you, physical rights from you. You don't you, you physical access to your baby. You have you have equal on that as well. And if you have a right to equal protections under the law, where is it at? Where is it at? Equal protection, equal protection of the laws. Then why would you agree to every other weekend? You don't agree to every other weekend. I want fifty fifty or whatever you and you. And you know, you and baby mama or baby daddy agree to whatever works for both of y'all. That's equitable because if, if your skill, but one of y'all got a work schedule that's too hectic to where you won't be able to have the child 50% of the time, then you can, you may go ahead and be like, okay, well, I don't mind you having a child then this time or whatever, whatever, whatever y'all work out. But that's up to y'all. Me, myself, through the course, I'm just going to be like straight 50 50. And then whatever we agree to privately, you know, that's cool. We'll do that. We'll work on that. But off the rip, we won't be weaponizing the course using the course to try to push not push no extra, no no upper hand on me using the course. So I will never agree to anything one sided from the court. I just won't do that. Now, because uh, that's what grown folks are supposed to do anyway. You're supposed to handle your situation privately. Folks shouldn't even be involved in your business. Okay, now where are, where are we? Where are we? Uh, right to a court seizures and searches. Um, uh, I guess I can read this: the right to to the the right of the people to be to be secure in their persons, houses, uh, papers, and papers and effects against and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrant shall be issued. I mean, shall issue except upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation. See, you can't put no warrant out on the body if ain't no, ain't no affidavit attached to it. Okay, this is something uh, a partner of mine got to got to look at too. He got a warrant out for his arrest for damn child for child support. Like, how the hell? Where's the affirmation? Where's the oath or affirmation? So somebody need to have a need to have a need to have an affidavit attached to that warrant confirming. That there's a probable cause, you know, and it's and it's supported by oath of all of uh or affirma affirmation, particularly describing the place, the place or places to uh to search and, and the person or thing to be seized. Why? Okay, who am I? You trying? You trying to seize me for what? How did I harm? How did, who harm me? How did I, how did I harm? Who did I harm? Okay, where's the affidavit? You know, sworn under penalty of perjury. That's what, and that's what they mean by affirmation. It's, it's an oath. They're swearing that did that you that you harmed them some type of way. Okay, that's what the warrant is for. Okay, so they got a warrant for child support. It's unconstitutional. Okay, there's even a part in the Constitution where you're supposed to be you're not supposed to be locked up for a debt. But anyway, let's keep going. Uh, benefits of counsel accusation listed uh, list of witnesses compulsory uh, process. Every 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 person charged with a, with an offense against the laws of this state shall have the privilege and benefit of a counsel. That's if you want an attorney or whatever. We ain't talking about them. Habeas corpus. A writ of habeas corpus shall not be suspended unless, in the case of, of rebellion or invasion, the public safety uh, may require it. Every state has a, has a habeas corpus has a habeas corpus process that you can that you can take advantage of. And and we already we understand what I'll go over habeas corpus one more time what it's for, okay? Uh, self incriminating say no person shall be compelled to give testimony tending any attending uh, in any manner to be self incriminating, okay? You ain't, gonna, you ain't gotta snitch on yourself. Uh, and I'm gonna let's see, let's see, uh, let's see, bails, fines, punishment, arrest, arrest, abusing. Okay. Okay, we ain't talking about that's that's cruel and unusual punishment. That's for somebody's locked up or whatever. Okay, I'm gonna back up for a minute because I, I thought about this when it was talking about compelled uh, self-incriminating. When it's talking about going back to the papers and and, and and I don't know if I mentioned this when I when I when I read this part about uh, being secure in your persons, your persons. Keep in mind, your persons is is, is not just 
You know, they may see your body as your person, you know, whatever, to my own your body, but it's not. It's, it's also, it, it, it's anything, uh, it could be like, your, say if you got a trust, um, a trust or a LLC or some type of, you know, paperwork, different type of paperwork or some type of entity that you have, be securing your persons, your house, your papers, okay, your papers, uh, check stubs, <laughs> okay, I think about check stubs, those are papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures. They ain't nobody, you ain't got to give your damn information about child support. Why the hell y'all give it up? You ain't got no, they can't make you give it to them. Okay? They can't make you give it to them. It's unconstitutional. They can't fuck with you if you choose not to give it to them. All you gotta do is file an objection to the damn court case. Hell, if you want, if you want to, you can have a certified copy of this bill of rights and have it filed in there too and object to it. You got a right to be secure in your person's how uh, your person's houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures uh, shall not be violated. I didn't give them shit when they asked me when they tried to compare. They even put a, a, a order to compel. You can't make me give you a goddamn thing. I said I don't agree to it. I don't. I don't. I don't. Uh, 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 um, I don't consent to the, to a, any type of agreement of paying being on no child support. So you ain't gonna make me give you shit. I didn't use the S words. I didn't drop the S bomb, but I said it in my head. But I did put it in writing that I did that. That I I do. I don't consent to any type of child support agreement. And they and I didn't give them anything. I didn't give them anything, I, I, except for that objection. I completed it. I com, I continue to object. You can object. Re, 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 ob, file your objection, and you don't give them no damn check stubs. You don't give them no financial affidavits. You don't put them in your financial business because it ain't the goddamn business what you make. Okay? You you got to stand on your square. And they and you ain't got to be all irate and passionate like you hear me hear it in my voice right now. Because I was a little, I, I was a little, you know, emotional when I went in my situation. I was very emotional. But I didn't have to be. Now, you know, you, a lot of times you're more emotional because you feel like they're going to railroad you when you know what's right. And that's the reason why you do that. But when you know, when you have the confidence that I have now, I don't. I, I will walk in there with all confidence in a court in a court case now, and won't be worried at all. Okay. Um, this we're not talking about double jeopardy. Um, let's see, treason, treason against 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 the state of Georgia shall consist of insurrection against against the state in uh in her uh, adhering to the state's enemies or giving them aid and comfort. We're not talking about that. Okay. Uh, conviction effect of no conviction shall work uh, uh, shall work com uh, corruptions of blood or forfeiture of a state hmm okay banish a whipping as ah oh. neither banishment uh, beyond the limits of, of, of the of the state or whipping shall be allowed as punishable <laughs> as punishment for a crime well when, when was this put out anyway Involuntary servitude. This is right here close to home right here. There shall be no involuntary servitude within the state of Georgia except as a, as a, as a punishment for a crime after legal conviction thereof or for contempt of court. Okay? The thing is, when you get your when you file for a, a peti petition for a writ of habeas corpus, first and foremost, they got you locked up in a court case. They got you locked up in some shit that you never agreed to. If you didn't agree to and you didn't have full disclosure and you were swindled into the situation, then that's grounds for shutting it down in the first place. They can't use swindle uh, and coercion and duress, uh, intimidation. They can't use those to get, to get you to comply with some type of with their agenda. Those are grounds for terminating the whole court, the whole court case. They can't use those. Okay, um, that's that's uh, that's harsh. That goes with the harsh and unusual punishment. Where is it? Yeah. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, I don't know. I read it in here earlier. Anyway. Anyway, let's go back. I don't want to lose track. Okay. Um, here we go. Here's another right here. Imprisonment for debt. A lot of y'all going to jail for child support. There shall be no punishment for debt. There's no. There should be no prison imprisonment. For a debt, see what I'm saying? You got a warrant out for your uh, uh, for your arrest for them for a child support. Are you serious? Tell me that's not constitutional. Tell me that's not unconstitutional. 
Okay, that's why you need a petition for a writ of habeas corpus. They that's what they do to you when you when you when they got you locked into this damn in the, in this contract. They took an oath to uphold this and defend this. Okay, this is the Constitution. In your state, they took an oath to the state constitution of the state of the, the, the constitution of that state and the constitution of the United States of America. So even if you're in a, if you're on child support here in Georgia and you got a child or you got a baby in California, you can use the United States of America constitution and it still, it goes across the board. So all, all judges all over the whole nation took a, took an oath to the constitution of the United States of America. So they got it. So they still get. So you can still use that in your case. You ain't got to get the this the the other states' constitution. You can get the one in America, the one for America, because all of them took an oath to it. Okay. So it's an oath to the state and the United States of America constitution. They took an oath to both of them. I've seen the oaths. I know them. And you can look in your state statutes and you see that for yourself too. Now, so that that's another another reason you need one of these here. Okay. <clears throat> no person shall be compelled to pay costs in any criminal case <clears throat> it's about the conviction of a trial let's see status of the citizen the social status of a citizen shall never be the subject of legislation let's see exception from the Bolivia of sale let's see I think I'm gonna stop right there y'all let's see yeah that's it that's it right there for that part Okay, now let's go. Let's go with the let, since I went with the Constitution. Y'all remember this? The COL form. You could put this in your petition. You ain't got to use the whole con, the whole the whole thing. You can just open up this little form, type in COL form and uh, violations warning, and you can just copy and paste these right here. These are the laws right here. You can copy them and put them in Word or Docs or whatever you type and use them. Work, of course, you got to play with the wording or whatever. You ain't got to play with this wording, but put it in your petition. Include it in your petition because they're violating this. This is all against the Constitution. Okay? Let me, let me make this bigger. Attempting to cause a person to do something by, by telling a person that such action is required by law uh, when it is not required by law may be a felony. 18 U.S.C. 242. Um, uh, proves it provides uh, that whoever under color of any law statute keep in mind law or statute it don't matter if it's the or statute ordinance uh, regulation or customs willfully subjects subjects a person in any state in any state territory commonwealth possession or district to the deprivation of any rights privileges or immunities secured or protected by the Constitution or laws of this uh, of the of this of the United States shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than one year or both. 18 U.S.C. 245, provided whoever uh, say whoever uh, rather or not acting under color of law intimidates or interferes with any person from uh, from participating in or enjoying any benefit. Uh, service, privilege, program, facilities, or or, or, or activity provided um, provided or administered by the uh, by the United States, or of uh, applying for or enjoying or uh, uh, hold on or applying for or enjoying employment or any uh, uh, prerequisite thereof by any a agency of the United States shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than one of one year or both. You know when they be, um, you can't even enjoy at your job. They be garnishing your wages. Uh, for you know what you got, you got fifteen, you got fifteen dollars on your damn check, and you know you should have had a couple thousand. <laughs> and they done, they done garnished all your wages. You're fighting with HR all the damn time. They are intimidating you in court. They are intimidating you using all types of threat and all types of uh, trickery and swindle tactics to scare you, uh, to squeeze, to scare you into compliance. They're interfering with your right to 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 uh, raise your babies the way you want to raise your baby. You you got the right to that, okay? They're interfering with that, okay? They don't have they don't have the they don't have the authority to do that. They can go to prison for that, okay? Put that in your petition. Um, Forty two U.S.C. nineteen eighty three provides that any person who who under who, who under color color of any statute ordinance um, um, 
regulation, custom, or usage of any state or territory or, or district of Columbia subjects or, or causes to be objected any citizen of the United States or, or other person uh, within the jurisdiction thereof to any deprivation of, uh, to deprivation of any rights, privileges, or immunities secured by the Constitution and laws shall be liable to the party injured in any action or law. A uh, suit of equity, a suit in equity, uh, or, or other proper proceeding uh, for redress. That's a petition for a writ of habeas corpus. Okay? All this stuff can be you. This can be used in your in your writ of habeas corpus. Your petition for a writ of habeas corpus. Okay, and you can make it as simple as possible. It don't have to be, you know. It don't have to be, you know, a whole lot of stuff in there. Let me jump on a couple of these here uh, states right here. Uh, this is a talking about a writ of habeas corpus in Florida right here. Uh, say any person detained in custody, whether whether charged with a crime or offense or not, applies for. Hmm, this one's this one's kind of vague right here because you'll think it's, it's 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 only limited to somebody that's detained in custody, so that's why it's good to read more than just one state. But you will, you know, I would I wouldn't I would not do this because it's in because it's in custody because it's in because it don't say that in these uh in these statutes. Because keep in mind the Constitution supersedes these statutes. Okay. That's what you got to understand. All public officials, all judges, they took an oath to the Constitution. So even if this ain't, even if this is not all worded like you wanted the word be worded, the Constitution will back in. It's gonna have your back. But of course, you can't use the Georgia Constitution in Florida. You need the Florida Constitution or the the Constitution of the United States of America. You can use that in Florida. But anyway, but anyway, it tells you you can actually use it. It's um. Uh, appeal for uh, any ju any judge therefore any ju judge thereof or any any circuit let me see if I can make this bigger uh, yeah circuit judge for rid of habeas corpus and show affidavit or evidence probable cause to um, to believe that he or she is is, is detained without lawful um, authority uh, the court justice or, or judge to whom uh, such a application is made shall grant the the writ uh, forthwith, I mean forth forthwith against the person with uh, in whom in whose custody the applicant is detained and returnable and returnable immediately before before any of the courts, justices or judges as a, as as the writ directs. Now let me go to is this New York. Tennessee, any person imprisoned, any person in prison or restrained of liberty under any pretense whatsoever. That that's the wording I like <laughs> because that that's a little that that helps you understand a lot a lot better what it's saying is aligned with what the Constitution is saying, y'all. Except in cases specified under Section B and the cases specified in twenty nine. Uh, 29, 21, 02. That one there is talking about somebody that's in prison. Let's say committed, detained uh, by virtue of uh, of process uh, issued by a court in the United States or, ju or judge thereof. In cases where such judges or courts have uh, have uh, exclusive jurisdiction under the laws of the United States or have acquired exclusive jurisdiction by the commencement of suits in such courts uh, are not entitled to benefits of this writ. That's what that was right there that y'all read. That's what y'all read right here. But uh, anyway, but anybody else, let's see, say may may prosecute uh, a writ of habeas corpus to inquire into the cause of the of the imprisonment or and restraint. Okay. Um. Let's see. I'm gonna read that part. Person restrained of their liberty pursu pursuant to a guilty plea. And and uh, and negotiated sentence are not entitled to benefits of a writ uh, in any claim that the petitioner receive uh, con uh, concurrent sentencing, uh, where there is a statutory uh, requirement for a conclusion. See, this here is about somebody that's already in jail. You know, somebody that they got a they got sentence. You know, you got found guilty and everything. So, you got a guilty plea. You know, you didn't plead guilty already. How are you gonna try to you know file for? Petition for a writ of habeas corpus. 
Okay, we try to stay on child support and custody. So that's what I'm gonna try to stay on. But as you see, that's what it says. Say any person in prison or restrained of liberty under any pretense whatsoever may prosecute a writ of habeas corpus to inquire into the cause of such uh, 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 imprisonment or uh, imprisonment and restraint. See? Let's see. Keep in mind, that's the or. Imprisonment or restraint of liberty. So it don't have to be both. It can be boy, you know, boy. Uh, anyway, anyway, now, uh, this is read that part already. Okay, New York. The application of a uh, 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 Application of article, special proceeding, except as otherwise provided, uh, prescribed by statute, uh, the provision of this article, of, of this article are applicable to, to common law or statutory writs of habeas corpus and common law writs of uh, um, centura, uh, centurari uh, to inquire into detention. Say a proceeding under this uh, under this article is uh, is a special proceeding. Of course, I went, y'all, I highlighted that because I was looking for what that actually, how to actually pronounce that shit <laughs> and what it actually is. But that's another topic for another discussion. So we're not going to talk about that. But that's what I had to, I had to uh, go ahead and make that, make this video because this is what y'all, um, okay, I said I'm going to go back to a habeas corpus. Uh, I did look at, I did look that up already. I think I went, I think I went through that already. Read of habeas corpus. One more time. Say you have the body, habeas corpus. You have the body. That's what that's what it means. It's a Latin term. Say, um, let's see. I don't want to read the origin of it and all that stuff because that, that's for the sake of time. Uh, let me just read that part. In U.S. In, in U.S. system, the federal court, uh, the federal court can use a writ of habeas corpus to determine if a, if a state's detention of a prisoner is valid. Uh, the writ of habeas corpus is used to bring a, a prisoner or, or other detainee. You see, it don't mean that you know. It don't mean uh, you say or other detainee. They, 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 what they they talking about institutionalized mental patient before the before the court to um, to uh, to determine if the prisoner if the person's imprisonment or detain or detention is lawful. A petition a habeas corpus petition proceeds. Uh, proceeds as a, as a civil action against the state agent, uh, usually a warden who holds and say usually not every time usually a warden who holds who holds a defendant in custody. Say uh, it can also be used to uh, to examine any extra extradition extradition processes used. Um, let's see the amount of bail and the jurisdiction of the court. The removal of a person, typically a fugitive or okay. Hmm. I'll just read on that, y'all. I just y'all know I'll be clicking on stuff. But it can be used for many things. As y'all can see, you looked in your state statutes, it says it says it in there. So it's not just limited to this. It's for someone who's being detained in, in in a jail, in you know, in prison, but it's not just for that. Okay. As a matter of fact, I even saw where matter of fact. Let me show y'all something in Georgia. So y'all yeah, just to kind of clear up any kind of any type of uh, confusion that might be there. This is Georgia. <clears throat> when a writ of habeas corpus is appropriate, it is used when a child is being uh, wrongfully detained. The court. Let me make this bigger. The court will decide based on on the basis of. <clears throat> on, on the best interest of the child who should have who should have custody it says uh however the writ of habeas corpus cannot be brought to modify custody so if it was always if it was already a, a some type of agreement on how y'all what y'all agreed on if you agreed on every other weekend say if you agreed on it now if you if some, some type of if there was some type of uh coercion that took place in the in the custody order now you might can use that you know, as grounds for why you why you petitioning. Let's see, the, let's see um, the petition for writ of habeas corpus in Georgia is governed by, and that's the that's the. Um, well, bottom line, as you can see, the writ of habeas corpus is not limited to somebody in prison. Okay, who can bring a petition for writ of habeas corpus? A person who has legal rights uh, to custody of a child 
or, or, or children may bring a petition for a writ of habeas corpus. However, the, the court may grant custody to one to one to uh, to to one other than the uh, than the legal custodian of the of the legal uh, legal custodian. Of, hold on a second. The court may grant custody to one other than uh, the legal custodian if the legal custodian is proved to be unfit by clear and satisfactory evidence. Okay. That court has, uh, say, what court has jurisdiction to hear the motion for a writ of habeas corpus? This is Georgia, y'all. So you gotta look in your state to see who, what court has, what what court has jurisdiction to do this. Okay, superior court, superior court has jurisdiction unless a juvenile court um, order is in effect. Say, so say the fact that that a, that a child is a uh, is in a is in a foreign jurisdiction at the time of the petition is filed does not deprive the court of jurisdiction. Say what is uh say what other what other laws uh, uh relate to the wrongful detention of a child, okay? Georgia uh, Georgia Uniform Child Custody Jurisdiction Enforcement Act, say uh, which which can be found at OCGA nineteen nine forty, okay? Say are uh, are the wishes of the minor over the age of fourteen controlling in in this situation? Say no, although the the child's wishes uh, will be considered. Okay, but I just want to kind of show show y'all that this is a uh, habeas corpus is not limited to somebody in prison. Okay, so when it comes to your babies, you should you you are able to use a petition for a writ of habeas corpus because that is a liberty that you have that you should be that that you that that you you if you're being restricted of that liberty to be able to raise your child the way you want to raise your child without without baby mama bullying you. <laughs> without the courts bullying you into some some child support case in order so they can make money off the situation and that's it's still it's still shitting on your rights so you you you're able to use a petition for a writ of habeas corpus to get to to, to deal with this situation and i would personally uh, advise anyone if you're going to use if you're going to go this route i would me myself i would use a, a certified copy of the constitution uh, attached to my my uh, my petition you know, and if you know uh, you want to prove that you actually have you know lawful, um, how can I say lawful and legal rights to the child by your, if your name's on the birth certificate, put put a certified copy of the put a copy of this uh, this you know the certificate of live birth of the child in there if your name is on there. Um, I would and if you have a trust, get a certified copy of your certificate of trust and file that in there if you got your kid in a trust. These are the type of things you can do. And, and and do that and, and file your file for your petition for your writ of habeas corpus and run with it and see who see see what see what happens after that and I guarantee I, I I can't see I can't see a guaranteed remedy out of this I don't see this not working because it's totally constitutional and the judges took oaths to to uphold the constitution and it, and this is this is something that I had to check myself on and I'm gonna close with this I. I, this thing is longer than I thought I was going to make it. Y'all see, I've been talking fast, and this damn thing still over 40 minutes long. But what I did was just that. I find, But the thing was, I also requested for equitable remedy, okay? I didn't ask, even though I got my son, I got this, this, this I got the, the Zlegas, mine, and my son in a trust, okay? Yes, I did that. I did all that. The UCC ones and everything, I did all that, okay? I even did the birth announcement. I claimed him. I did all that. Okay, but I'm still not trying to get one up on baby mama. I still, because I don't want to shit on my son's rights. My son's rights are more important than anything here. And I wouldn't want to restrict him from his mother be simply because his mother is restricting him from me. I'm not with the get back because that's not equitable and it's not, it doesn't make me no better than her if I'm trying to do that. Okay, so what I'm, so I'm trying to get from the court an equitable remedy. Okay. Keep in mind, equity is what you're seeking, and there's a there's a there's a maxim of law: uh, one who seeks equity. Uh oh. Must do equity. Must do equity. He who would he who would uh, and this is a maxim of law. I didn't even know this was in the Georgia codes. Say he who would have equity must do equity and must give a effect to all equitable rights of, of the other party respecting the subject matter of, of the action. 
you stand a better chance when you come in with an equitable remedy for the court. I'm not shitting on my baby mama's rights. I ain't shitting on my rights. And I'm definitely not shitting on my son's rights when I'm asking 50 50 everything. I want to have, I want my son to have equal access to his father and his mother so that he can continue on with his relationship with his mother. But he needs to, he needs to, he needs to continue his relationship with his father from start. Just pick up where we left off when he was a baby. And he just get to know me as from where he is now on to until from now on. That is problem solved. Everybody's rights are being are being are being um, nobody's rights are being squandered or being restricted. Okay, so make sure this is what I do when I came when I entered in my petition for rid of habeas corpus. I don't want nobody's rights shitted on. Okay, and I came with equitable mentality. See, I know that's kind of hard for a lot of us to do because I, it was hard for me, to be honest. Because it, it's a part of us that want baby mama to pay for that shit. Because they're wrong for what they're doing when they're restricting the kids. They don't even give a damn about their kids having rights to their own parent, to their own father. And they really think that they're all they need, their child need. You know, so when they think like that, you know, they're not thinking equitably. See, but you, but until they, so keep in mind, you're trying to stand a better chance of getting equity, getting an equitable remedy when you're coming to do equity. And that's exactly what I did. I didn't even know this code was in the Georgia codes. I didn't even know. I just typed in because I know this is a maximum of law. So one who seeks equity must do equity. So I didn't even know that this was in, the, in there, but I guarantee it's probably in y'all codes too. So you got to be looking, if you're looking at equity, you need to be trying to look for something that's going to, that's going to be right. It's going to help everybody. It's going to help the whole, the whole common good. Okay. So that's what I did, and so that's what I I don't want to put up put on here what I wrote what I typed up here because I got addresses and everything on my paperwork, and I'm not putting my address nor I'm nor what I put my son's mom's address on here. I wouldn't do that. So, um, so you just gotta make sure when you create create your petition, make sure you come with equity. If you're trying to do equity, keep in mind the key word for equity is what? Okay, it's equal. Equal, being same in quantity, size, degree, value. You know, you want to, you want, you want something that's equal. You know. We talking about equal rights, uniform. See, on the same plane or le or level with respect to efficiency, worth, value, amount, or rights. Okay, you don't, you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to try to try to crap on somebody else's rights. So, when you come in, when you come in with equity, you 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 got everybody's mind, everybody's rights in mind, and you're trying to come up with a remedy that's going to help everybody. It's going to help that, and and when it comes to children, they're most important out of all these situations. Okay, their rights are most important because they are the they are their rights are just more important than everybody else's. That's just how I see it anyway, and so. I'm gonna go ahead and end with that. I'm long-winded now. I'm past. I'm at 48 minutes now, so I'm gonna get out of here, y'all. If you haven't liked and subscribe, I hope y'all got something out of this, cause I've really been trying to pack something in here, and I tried to make it short and sweet, but uh, I wasn't successful in that. But <laughs> it's all good. But hopefully, y'all y'all got something from that. And then uh, if not, um, if you got anything else, any questions or whatever, be sure to go ahead and make a comment in the, in the comment section and I will, you know, get with you on that. If I got to make a video, I'll do that. Like, subscribe, and we'll see y'all in the, like and subscribe and we'll